I was interested in finding ways to include aspects of uh, construction and artifice in my work. So when I made something like The Destroyed Room in 78, that was a sort of a, a statement of what directions could be new, at least for me, in photography. Mm -hmm. And that involved the studio inventing things, conjuring them up. So I was interested in that problem very elaborately for a long time. I mean, literally at the same time, going around the city with my camera, trying to make pictures of the city. So mm -hmm. it was not something that came afterwards. It was a counterpart to this interest in the, in a way, the opposite, which was this, you know, constructive, constructive pictorial view of what photography could be. At the same time right. I was, at the same time I was doing that, I was trying to make cityscapes. So at almost exactly the same moment when I was in my studio doing picture of a woman or destroyed room or something, I was making cityscapes. So they were almost like two, uh, two parallel directions yeah. at the same time. So that, so what it meant to me was that objective photography, documentary photography, was an equal, equally interesting to subjective photography or pictorial photography or studio photography. Mm -hmm. I wanted to do them both and I wanted to do everything in between, whatever that was. Okay. The city was an immediate uh, subject and straight photography was an immediate interest. People mm -hmm. think that what I did was just, you know, invent something to do with construction and what I call cinematography, and it's true, but this was part of it. First of all, we can't ever escape the general objective documentary type of photography, and I never tried to escape it. I think that, as, you know, there's uh, this process of documentary photography where where people carry the camera and they search and hunt and find things and once in you know one in a thousand they get a really good picture. I'm just not that kind of person. Whereas I was still interested in these occurrences, whatever they might be. I wasn't interested in capturing them that way because it's it seemed to restrict my ability to shape things. So uh, so I see things I don't photograph them and I think, but nevertheless I can make them happen again. And that's why I call what I do cinematography because cinema people make things happen and they can look very real and we take them as real while we're watching a film. So I can do that too and so um, I might find a, an event, an occurrence that I'd like to do something with but the moment where I saw the occurrence didn't, it didn't, the occurrence didn't take place in the right place for me. So then I need to find a place. It, you know, it's a process of letting the, finding those two, bringing those things together. Mm -hmm. But those places, I've discovered most of them just by drifting around the city, uh, which is part of my work, just drifting. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't really search in the sense of, I don't quite know what I'm looking for, I'm just yeah. looking. Right. And if I see something, I'll make a note of it, and then I will return to it when I can. So these, la these cityscapes, landscapes, I thought of as, um, moments during those searches where mm -hmm. in fact I didn't find a secluded spot yeah. I found the overall thing when I you know when I started working intensely here I realized that Vancouver was just as good as anywhere even though I'm sure there are places where there are more spectacular and interesting cityscapes but nevertheless it was it was perfectly adequate so for example in Park Drive and realized that over time uh, parts of the forest this forest cover had vanished through storms, trees falling down, selective gardening, whatever. And I noticed that along this stretch of Park Drive, on the, at least the one side, there's only a thin row of trees. Behind it, there is no there are no real trees. That the forest has been a lot of it's been removed. And I thought that was sort of fascinating that it was sort of like a hedge or a facade it appeared to be a vestige of the original forest. Picture making has its frame of reference. Picture making has its standards, its history, you know, and its um, its criteria. And I, th I think those are I think that those are 
held in common by photographers or painters or, draw or drawers. There's a lot of transition between, or a lot of discussion between those art forms, and, they're always, always, and there always has been since the beginning of photography. So when I make my pictures, I have that in mind. I have, uh, I have, what, I have my idea of what makes a good picture, picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, in mind, but I don't have in mind any particular mm. picture, right. just what makes them. And so with photography, it becomes complex because uh, in painting, for example, if there's something that doesn't suit the composition, or the aesthetic idea, you can simply ignore it. This kind of work, uh, that's not really possible. So it's mm. quite easy for something to disturb the pictorial aim. Some detail, some problem, some, some circumstance of the real environment. Uh, I know how to include those things, uh, and I think photography does include those things, um, but it's a different process. So um, I can't really use, any, in any direct way, any lessons learned from painting. I can't use them directly in what I do with a camera, because it's not the same art form. But there's just an infinite number of ways of using that. And I use it my way, and other people use it in some other way.